Well, welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded, and I'm your host, Irv Risch. And today I have a story uh, for you again, and uh, that story is uh, about a train wreck, but the title of the story is The Six Man Story. In other words, uh, this is the story about the sixth man telling his story. And this story had to do with something that was done in the past, and it was a mockery. It was a mockery to God, and that's what the story is all about. So with that said, let's just uh, get into the story. It was an awful train wreck. It was an awful wreck. The train had run past a small station into the path of an oncoming express. There were many dead and seriously injured. Doctors and nurses were rushed to the scene. Mr. Waters, a passenger, <clears throat> escaped uninjured, and he was trying to comfort the victims. He knelt beside a well-dressed man who was fatally hurt, though in no great pain. Well, Mr. Waters tried to reassure the dying man, but he begged Mr. Waters to listen to his story and to tell it to others as a warning. And the story that he told was about a mockery. He said that 10 years before, while traveling as a salesman, he had spent a night of partying at a hotel. On that evening, uh, they began ridiculing the gospel meeting that was being held in the town. The elderly preacher was presenting the good news of God's love to lost sinners. A few who had before been drunkards and been converted, this increased the hatred for the others against the preacher and against all those interested in his message. Well, the injured man can continued, on a particular evening, all kinds of wicked jokes were made, and the more I and my companions drank, the worse we became. Someone asked how the meeting uh, was conducted, and what happened to them. Well, half the drunkard, uh, a half-drunk young man, offered to demonstrate if a few others would join him in the show. Well, there were six of us kneeling on the floor and started the mockery. We prayed for the forgiveness of our sins and we tried to imitate uh, tears in, of repentance. We closed with a song we had learned in childhood, Rock of Ages, cleft for sinners or for sin. They were done. We found ourselves all alone Shocked by the blasphemy, the rest of the guests had left and gone home. We were just making fools of ourselves at the time, but didn't realize it. Here the serious injured man paused. Then he said, What I am about to tell you is no fiction. No, it happened within the last ten years. There were six of us participating in that farce. Before the end of the first year, the hotel owner, who was one of them, suffered a fall, and in that fall, a blood vessel burst in his brain, and he never regained consciousness. He died. Someone might not think that is unusual, but notice, it was a violent death. Two years later, a young man who started the show, was with a hunting party in the country. During the night, he got up to get a drink of water in the dark, and he missed his way and fell down the steps. He broke his neck and died two days later. The third to go was Tom, who had been a leader of the mockery. He fell down his own cellar steps and died. Now I began to be uneasy. What would happen to my two other companions? Uh, Solbert 
and fearful. One of those uh, went, went west, hoping to avoid a tragic end. I heard that he became a railway guide, uh, an unusual safe uh, occupation, but before long, a newspaper report reported of his tragic death. He had been caught between the bumper of two coaches and died a horrible death. Last year, I met my only surviving companion. He became depressed after having lost his wife and two children. One evening, he fell from the door of the saloon into the concrete walk. His head struck a rock, and he died instantly. Since that time, I have been waiting for my end. I knew I couldn't escape, and now it has come. And the truth of the matter is, God is not mocked. In less than ten years, all six who took part in that mockery died violent deaths. Apparently, not one of them had repented and turned to God. What a solemn voice. How true are the words of Scripture. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of an angry God. An angry an angry living God. Hebrews 10.31 You know, the judgment only affects the body of those mockers, but how about the souls passing into eternity unforgiven? They must appear before the white, great white throne judgment to receive the awful sentence of God's just judgment. Well, because a sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the Son of Man is fully set to do them evil. Ecclesiastics 8.11 Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whoever, uh, so whatever a man soweth, that shall he reap. You know, we God, we just can't mock God. Uh, and if you do, things bad might happen. In fact, things will happen. Uh, you know, the serious point that I'm trying to get across here is not so much mocking God. You know, even saying things against God, uh, the Bible teaches that if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, and I believe this is what those men were doing. They were making fun of the Spirit of God that was going forth and convicting men of sin, and men were turning to the Lord Jesus. When you make fun of that, there's a price to be paid. And these men found out what that price was. Well, that's the story I had to share with you today. And uh, with that said, I'm going to end my podcast like I always do. God is out here. You can find them in your Bible. Just pick it up and read it. Well, that's all I got for you today. Have a great day. Lord bless.